Uh, this is the third lecture of this week. Uh, first two lectures, what we have done is uh, we have seen how the theory, uh, the methods that we discussed in the last uh, subsequent weeks, how that methods can be translated into computer code and a very basic code. And uh, through that code, how we can large scale problems, uh, comparatively large scale problems, which is not otherwise possible using manual calculations uh, can be solved. Okay. And um, we will be doing the similar exercise for three dimensional truss today at the next class. Uh, we have not yet uh, uh, discussed what is the theory, of how the, how, what are the stiffness matrices, how the three dimensional truss is to be solved. We have discussed for 2D plane, uh, plane trusses. Now, today before we write 3D code for truss in the next class, let us today spend some time to understand what is the basic steps involved in uh, analysis of thrust, truss in three dimension. Steps are essentially same, only thing is because of the one additional dimensions, your uh, size of the stiffness matrices, formation of the stiffness matrices, these will be different. Okay. Otherwise, rest of the thing, the essence of the steps will remain same. So, today we will discuss how to analyze uh, truss in three dimension using uh, matrix method of structural analysis. Okay. Okay. So, uh, mm, some example of 3D truss, these are some examples of 3D truss. In fact, these two examples I am showing, these two examples will be solved uh, in the next class. Now, um, first is uh, like what we will do is, we have, we have done this exercise in detail for plane truss. Some of the things we have, we will take from the, take for granted from the plane truss because we have already discussed that. And uh, we'll then see how that same methods can be extended to three dimension. What are the modifications required for one additional dimension? Okay, so uh, sign convention uh, as the same sign convention we'll use. Uh, let us uh, now discuss this. Okay, suppose let us fix our coordinate system. We have a coordinate system like this. We have a coordinate system this, this and this. Suppose this is x, this is y, this is, this is y and this is z. Right? Now, we have a truss, uh, say this is a truss, mm. this is a truss, this is a truss member, any truss member say m, truss member m and this is ith point and this is jth point. Okay? Now, uh, if you recall, we had two coordinate system. One is local coordinate system, which is uh, which which takes the trusses are the two force members. So always we know that force set in the truss is along the longitudinal direction of the truss, right? Now that longitudinal direction is the local coordinate of the truss, and the global coordinate is x, y, z is the global coordinate system. Now let us let us uh, say u is equal to this is the longitudinal direction. Uh, suppose this is, so in this direction your, your displacement is in this direction and the displacement is in this direction, displacement in this direction. Suppose this is u1, u1 and this is u2, okay. So u1, u2 are the, uh, u1, u2 are the displacement in truss uh, which is oriented in three dimension, u1 is at the ith point or say it is the point number 1. Uh, to so that we do not have any confusion. This is point number 1 and this is point number 2, node number 1 and node number 2. Then similarly, we have uh, we have force say q1, q1 will be force in this direction and then q2 will be force in this direction. So, this is q1 and this is q2, right. So, q1, u1 are the force and displacement at node 1 and q2, u2 are the force and displacement in node 2. So, total displacement, the change in length of truss uh, of this truss member M will be u1 minus u2 and the member forces, member force in this truss will be q1 minus q2. Okay? Now, if you recall, so in local coordinate system, uh, if we if we write this q and u q and u uh, if you if you find out the relation between q and u if you recall the relation was uh, if you have say q q1 the force displacement relation this was is equal to a stiffness matrix and then u1 
and u2 and if you recall the stiffness matrix will be 1 minus 1 minus 1 and 1 irrespective of whether it is 3 dimension 2 dimension in the local coordinate system your stiffness force displacement relation will remain same this is the force displacement relation in local coordinate system and then what we did is now this then we we had to find out the force displacement relation in the global coordinate system when you talk about global coordinate system let us define what are the forces and what are the corresponding displacement with respect to global coordinate system now global coordinate system suppose this is v1 in this direction this is, say this is v1 in this direction it is say v1 v1 is the force in x1 and then v2 is the force in x2 a y2 uh, or y direction and then v3 v3 are the in z direction similarly the forces are this will be force say this force is f1 f1 this force is similarly f3 and this force is f2 f2 now what we have to find out we have to find out a relation between f and v so our objective is to get relation between f is equal to this force is equal to some stiffness the stiffness is equal to k and then v okay so this is our final objective to get we have done this exercise we have obtained this relation for two dimensional for plane for plane truss the same exercise for space truss now if you recall what from from local coordinate system to global coordinate system we had to use one transformation one transformation is required right now we have to define a transformation matrix and through that transformation mat matrix we transform the displacement as well as the force and then find out the find out this relation let us do this exercise now suppose, suppose length of this member will be for length will be if we have length is equal to this will be x1 minus x2 square plus x plus y1 minus y2 square y2 square plus a z1 minus z2 square okay so this is square root so every length we can obtain like this length of any arbitrary member okay whether you write x1 minus x2 or x2 minus x1 both are uh, fine because you have square here now this is the length of a member now you see in order to get the transformation matrix what we need is we need how this truss member in three dimensional space how what is the orientation of this truss member and the orientation is defined by in plane from plane frame uh, plane truss this orientation was defined by two angles how what is the angle with respect to x and what is the angle with respect to y and since it is orthogonal x and quadrant system so it is defined by just one angle how this truss is orient what is the angle between the truss and with respect to x or with respect to y axis similarly here also in order to get the transformation matrix we need to see what is the angle this truss member is making with different axis right now uh, suppose uh, suppose theta x theta y and theta z are the are those axis with respect to x y z coordinate and then if you recall we dis we we defined in in 2d truss we defined two parameters uh, lambda x and lambda y and the lambda x lambda y uh, is essentially lambda x was cos theta x and lambda y was cos theta y similarly here also we define three we define three parameters which is lambda x lambda y and lambda z so lambda x will be lambda x which is essentially cos theta x and if you recall this is x2 minus x1 by l right similarly lambda y will be cos theta y this will be y2 minus y2 minus y1 by l and lambda z uh, was cos theta z which is z2 minus z1 by l okay and 1 and 2 depends on how the members how you this how you are describing the connectivity okay here this is one this is very important this is uh, this is your uh, this is this th this member this point is 1 this point is 1 and this point is 2 okay this point is 2 and this point is 1 so how you define the connectivity depending on that is x1 x2 y1 uh, uh, describe so this is 
the same extension of lambda x and lambda y with respect to uh, in 3D. Now, then what we did next is we did then we have to find out a relation between now we have displacement u, u2 and u1 and u2 with respect to global local coordinate system and then we have displacement v1 v2 v3 with respect to uh, with respect to um, okay uh, uh, one thing we missed here is with respect to global coordinate system we have uh, uh, we have actually six uh, six uh, coordinate six forces and that we have uh, okay uh, suppose at this point at this point also we have three displacement let us these are not v1 v2 v3 let us define in a different way hmm. uh, defined v3 defined let us defined a different way hmm. and similarly force also let us defined uh, slightly different way hmm. because then it will be easier for us. Okay. So, what is required is suppose at this point if I draw the truss once again um, if we draw the truss this is the truss this is the truss and this point is this point is this point is 1 and this point is 2 and then in this point we have th 3 displacement 1 is along x, x direction 1 is along y direction and 1 is along z directions right so suppose this is v1 this is v2 and this is v3 so v1 v2 v3 are the three displacement at node 1 similarly here also we have displacement along z x direction and displacement along y direction and displacement along z direction and suppose this is v4 v5 and v6 similarly we have forces forces will be if in this direction it is f1 then it is f2 f3 and similarly it is f4 and then f uh, f5 and f6 okay so what we this relation is essentially this v1 v2 v3 and this f1 f2 uh, this v's and this f so in a given member we have total 6 degrees of freedom so three displacement at node 1 and three displacement at node 2 Okay. Now, so what we have to find out e1, e2 are the local displacement, this is a displacement with respect to local coordinate system, u and v is the displacement with respect to global coordinate system, you have to find the relation between this u and v and if you recall the relation we obtain just by taking the projection of uh, v1, v2, v3 along the uh, along the longitudinal axis of the truss. So, if we project it v1, v2, v3 along the longitudinal axis, we get see this e1 and if you project v4 v5 and v6 along the longitudinal axis we get u2 and and this projection will be e1 will be then v1 cos theta x plus v2 cos theta y plus v3 cos theta z right similarly u2 will be u v4 cos theta x plus v 5 cos theta y plus v 6 cos theta z. So, this is the relation. So, once we then now this relation can be written as if we if we just this relation can be written as if you have u 1 and u 2 this will be then equal to uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, this equal to we have say a matrix matrix and then this will be v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 and v6 okay and this matrix will be if you x cos theta x is lambda x cos theta by lambda and cos theta is lambda z this will be lambda x lambda y lambda z 0 0 0 and then 0 0 0 lambda x lambda y and lambda z similar expression we had in case of 2d uh, in case of 2d frame okay
So, this is the relation. So, this relation is the relation between displacement in local coordinate system and the displacement in global coordinate system. Now, if we have to do same exercise for forces as well, the forces in local coordinate system is Q1 and Q2 and forces in global coordinate system is F1, F2, F3, F4, F5 and F6. We have to find out the relation be between this Q and F. What we have to do is we have to take, we have to take the component of Q1 in x, y and z direction and we get correspondingly f1, f2, f3. If we take component of q2 in, uh, in x, y, z direction, we will get uh, respectively f4, f5 and f6. And if we do that exercise, then this will be, um, so let us take one more, uh, uh, so this will be, um, this will be, say f1 will be, um, f1 is f1 if we take the component uh, if we take this component q1 in x direction we get f1 so f1 will be cos theta x into q1 and then f2 will be f2 will be cos theta y into q1 and f3 will be cos theta z into q y, into into q1 right now similarly f f4 will be cos theta x into q2 f5 will be cos theta y into q3 and f6 will be cos theta z into q4 now if we combine this then we have f1 f2 f3 then f4 f5 f6 all the forces in global coordinate system is equal to a uh, matrix like this and then we have q1 q1 and q2 and this is if we write lambda x this is lambda y lambda z and this is 0 0 0 and this will be 0 0 0 lambda x lambda y and lambda z okay now if i if i say that this this is equal to the entire thing this entire thing is equal to uh, this uh, this entire thing if i say this transformation as t if we say that then what we have is then we have this expression we have u is equal to u is equal to t into v T is the transformation and then from this becomes in T transpose this is equal to F is equal to T transpose into Q. These two relation we have and a similar relation we also we derive in the case of 2D, uh, 2D truss. The exercise is essentially the essence the steps is essentially uh, are same. So, this is the expression between uh, now once we have this we are almost done. Now, we already have a relation between q1 and e1. Uh, let us write that relation. We had a relation is q1 q2 is equal to uh, a e by l a e by l this is the with respect to local coordinate system minus 1 minus 1 and then e, e1 and e2 ok right. Now, say if this is small k if this is small k then this is essentially q is equal to small k into u ok. Now, this is expression this expression this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 this is 3. Now, with this expression what we do is we first substitute expression 3 in expression 2 and then expression 1 in expression 2 and then what we have is q is equal to so, q is in this expression if we substitute say u is equal to u is equal to t into v then what we have is that q is equal to k into t into v ok. So, I am not writing uh, uh, please note that k v they are the v are the vector and k is a matrix. So, when you write this you please refer to their uh, corresponding definition how they are defined. So, k into v. Now, again we have a relation between we have a relation between uh, between uh, this between uh, between uh, ok. So, now this is done. Now, 
now then if we substitute the entire thing this ex entire expression this entire expression into expression 2 then what we have is we have then f is equal to f is equal to t transpose t transpose and this expression in q small k and then t into v okay now this is equal to so if i this is equal to f is equal to t transpose t transpose small k is equal to a e by a e by l a e by l into 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and then again t into v so this we can write finally this we can write f is equal to some matrix k it is capital k into into v right into v where what is capital k capital k is equal to capital k is equal to t a e by l we can take out a e by l and then t transpose t transpose then 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and then t this is the stiffness matrix this is the stiffness matrix okay now let us see what is the dimension of the stiffness matrix a e by l is a constant t transpose will be t transpose dimension of t transpose will be 6 cross uh, 2 then this is 2 cross 2 2 cross 2 and this dimension of t will be 2 cross 6 2 cross 6 so essentially this becomes 6 cross 6 so this stiffness matrix will be 6 cross 6 stiffness matrix okay and then let us write the expression for that matrix the expression for that matrix will be finally um, if we have say k k is the stiffness matrix so k is equal to we have we have t transpose which is lambda x lambda y lambda z 0 0 0 and then this is 0 0 0 lambda x lambda y lambda z and then we have 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and then here we have lambda x lambda y lambda z then 0 0 0 0 0 0 lambda x lambda y lambda z this is the matrix we have a e by l outside a e by l outside so this is the entire expression now if we just do this manipulation final expression very similar to very similar to the uh, plane truss a e by l uh, this matrix this will be uh, finally uh, if you recall lambda x square and then lambda x lambda y and then lambda x lambda z okay and similarly negative of this minus lambda x square minus lambda x lambda y lambda y and then minus lambda x lambda z so and then similarly this will be lambda x since it is similar it is symmetric lambda x lambda y this is lambda y square and this is lambda y lambda z and then this is negative of this minus lambda x lambda y then minus la lambda y square minus lambda uh, y lambda z and so on. So, this is how you can do this and get the entire stiffness matrix and if you compare this with the stiffness matrix in 2D truss what you do is you remove the corresponding column say for instance z it is z axis the elements associated with z axis corresponding column and corresponding row if you remove them and then get, and then see the the stiffness matrix that you get that is very similar uh, to the plane uh, truss or not so so from 3D you can uh, you can get the 2D version of this plane truss Okay. Now, once you have this, then rest of the thing, this, this is the stiffness matrix. Once we have the stiffness matrix, again you also check whether the stiffness matrix is symmetric or not. You also check the stiffness, what is the inverse of the symmetry, uh, stiffness matrix, the, whether the determinant of the stiffness matrix, whether it is 0 or not. You should be getting the determinant 0 because of the obvious fact that uh, no boundary condition information have so far been in, uh, enforced in this uh, in this stiffness matrix. Okay. Now, next is next is your uh, uh, rest of the thing is um, 
once we have stiffness matrix rest stays we have to assemble this stiffness matrix when at the time of assembling at the time of assembling uh, all these steps that we followed uh, in, in the case of 2d plane truss uh, same thing we have to do the process will be entirely, entirely same and the thing is once you get the assembled stiffness matrix then the process of partitioning the stiffness matrix into depending on the known displacement field and the known uh, reaction known uh, force field partition the stiffness matrix and get the uh, and and then you, you you and get the get the, uh, the solution for uh, uh, unknown displacement and once we have the unknown displacement rest of the things like uh, your uh, uh, calculation of support reactions and then member forces ok. So, they will be same. So, up to the calculation of support reactions they is same. Now, let us see how to calculate the member forces ok. Now, member forces if you recall the member forces the force will be since all the for all the force will be essentially q1 minus q2 will be the force now the relation between q1 and q2 we have uh, if you have if you see this this is q1 and q2 right now uh, how q1 and q2 is related to each other q1 and q2 is related to each other um, Yes, Q1 and Q2 is related to each other uh, with this, and uh, this this is this is how this Q1 and Q2 is related to each other with velocity, with with with, with displacement. This expression. Okay, let us use this expression to get the member forces. So what we have is Q is equal to uh, Q is equal to k k into T into V right now if we have this is the this is the member in the truss at this point you your force is q this points it is 1 this point it is 2 here you have q1 and here you have q2 q2 so the forces in this member will be q2 minus q1 so so let us let us calculate what is q1 and q2 only thing is only thing is you have solved for the unknown displacement global displacement right so q1 and q2 will be uh, will be your uh, k which is uh, which is ae by l ae by ae by l into <coughs> into 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and then finally your t t is we have uh, this is is equal to t which is lambda x lambda y lambda z 0 0 0 and 0 0 0 lambda x lambda y lambda z and then corresponding your v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 ok now v1 v2 v3 already we know we have already determined that value ok now so what will be what will be then this from this expression what you have to find out is we have to find out what is the you have to express this thing in what you have to from this you have to express what is the value of q1 in terms of lambda x lambda y lambda 1 and uh, from this expression what is the what is the expression for q2 in terms of lambda x lambda y and lambda 1 ok. So, for instance so this will this one will be a e by l if we if we take a e by l and if we multiply this then this expression will be uh, this expression will be your um, so um, this expression will be uh, your this will be lambda x lambda x and then this will be lambda y and then uh, okay let us let us let us this will be lambda x lambda y lambda z and then uh, z 0 0 0 and then you will get 0 0 0 lambda lambda x lambda y and lambda z ok and then you your this vector. So, your force will be q1 minus q2 if you take the force and this will be this will give you essentially a e by l a e by l and then lambda x lambda y lambda z and then minus lambda x minus lambda y minus lambda z into the force into the velocity. So, this will give you the um, member force in a particular uh, the member force in this member 
Okay. So, you have when you implement it, please be consistent with the sign convention. So, here maybe sign conventions are mixed up. So, you have to be very careful about the sign convention that you use. This is how you can calculate the member forces and you remember when in the case of 2D, uh, 2D, 2D truss, we if you remove lambda z, if you remove this term and this was the, uh, this was the thing that we had. Uh, in case of 2D truss. So, this is how we can calculate the member force. The rest of the thing is exactly uh, same. Now, you see the idea of this lecture has been to uh, has been to uh, to see how the um, the concept that we learned in 2D can be extended to 3D and this is a very brief discussion of that extension. You can have the detailed derivations, everything you can do on your own, uh, but rest at the end of the day you will be getting see, this, this, this kind of expression. Now, next is we have to translate this entire thing the way we uh, did in for did for 2D truss, the same thing we have to do it for 3D truss and then see. Um, and then see how some complex structure, relatively larger structure can be used, can be solved uh, easily with this method. So, computer implementation uh, of this um, of this of 3D class will be discussed in the next class. So, I stop here today, see you in the next class, thank you.